helpers. Today we're going to see if the steel John boat will float. Now watch as I make a well that will make the angels cry. Justin, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I am thinking what you're thinking. Will it float? After positively, lutely. Let's do it. Let's do it. Today, me and my brother-in-law Justin here, we're on our way to my favorite metal place to pick up some metal for the Mary Lou 2. Woo! Let's go. Me and Justin built the Mary Lou 1 a few years ago, and it floated really, really well. But we've been wondering if a steel one will float too. Right now, I'm thinking that I want the majority of the boat to be made out of 20 gauge steel, so I'm going to see if they have some of that here. I'm also going to pick up some 1x2 square tubing. I'll use that to make the frame. Well, look at this, they even sell boat cleats here. Might even pick up a little bit of scrap metal too. This is a pretty good piece. Now we're just waiting for him to load us up so we can get started. Justin and his family are here for the holidays, so we thought we'd take full advantage of his time here. Merry Christmas! Okay, we're going to cheat to do this today. I'm not very good at cutting things out by hand, so we're going to use George to cut this uh, boat bottom out, and then we'll start putting it together. I'm not an engineer or anything, I'm just learning as I go here, so we're going to see how it turns out. First we're going to start with the 20 gauge here and we're going to cut out the boat bottom. Playing Xbox here. Well, I was never actually any good at Xbox, so that makes one more thing I'm not good at. This machine works pretty good, but it really doesn't do too well on the thinner stuff. It really does a lot better on the thicker material. But I'm afraid if I go too thick, this thing might not float. So we'll go ahead and cut the 20 gauge out now, and then uh, we'll go through the pain of welding it together here in just a few minutes. Well, we got the first piece cut out. It looks okay so far. On some of the more important structural portions of the boat, we decided to go with 16 gauge. You're going to really like this next idea. We wanted to use these buckets with uh, swivel seats on top so we could store all our stuff inside of them. Then we can just bring them out to the boat when we're ready. That way they're not constantly sitting out in the weather. So to do this, we just cut a couple 11 and a quarter inch holes uh, for our buckets in the bow of the boat. Now I'm not really sure if all buckets are the same size, so this measurement may or may not work for other size buckets. Now if you start seeing these on uh, some of the big boat manufacturers boats in the future, just remember where you saw it first. see us trying to come up with some measurements for the side pieces. Someone please tell me in the comments below what kind of math it is that you use to calculate these curves. I'm guessing it's calculus, but I'm really not sure since I'm not a mathematician. Which way did you go, George? Which way did you go? Are you ready for this? <laughs> George is an awesome tool, but it can be really frustrating. Let's break out the welder now. Here you go. 
right here. It's off. Grab him. Grab him. <laughs> we'll see how good I am here. Uh, this 20 gauge is like welding two pop cans together. There was a ton of welding on this project, and uh, it wasn't very much fun because of having to weld the 20 gauge. Now, I think that it would have helped if I would have bought some 564 welding rods. I ended up using 330 seconds because that's all I could find around and I was gonna have to special order the 564s, but in retrospect, I wish I would have just ordered them. It wasn't too bad welding the areas where there was 16 gauge though. Uh, I didn't have any issues on those spots. Now, unfortunately, we did break the fabrication rules of frame it, tack it, and then weld it since I don't know calculus or whatever math that is to figure up those curves. So basically we tacked it, then we framed it, and then we welded it. It would have been way easier if we would have just made like a squarish boat. Uh, but me and Justin weren't really sure if this thing was going to float anyway, so we decided just to go ahead and uh, build a design that we kind of wanted. Ugh, this reminds me of why I didn't want to become a welder. Now it's time to guess what the pieces should look like to go on the front of the boat. I have no clue, but we're going to try these out. We did stiffen the bow of the boat up a little bit before we put these front pieces on. This is just one inch square tubing. Justin, how are you doing in there? I'm pretty comfy in here. Think it'll keep water out yet? Uh, no, but soon. <laughs> Okay, because I don't know uh, how to do this math right here, I had a little gap right here, so I cut out a couple pieces uh, to fit over those. Now time for more welding. And more welding. And even more welding. Way too much welding. I don't really enjoy welding that much. <laughs> now that we've uh, welded the basic shell here, uh, we're gonna take some one inch channel iron and then we're gonna make the, uh, we're gonna add these to the bottom here. I'll spare you from watching me do all of that. And notice how there's not very many close-ups here. I was a certified welder in high school, but um, my skills have kind of diminished a little bit. This is probably one of the most important parts of the boat. It needs to be really strong. Um, we only have a six horsepower motor, but uh, we still want a little bit of strength there. Now for the frame on the inside of the boat, we use 14 gauge one by two tubing. Okay, for the two sides, I had some scrap 10 gauge laying around. We'll go ahead and cut those out and then we'll weld them in. I wanted another spot for a bucket so I could operate the tiller in the back. So we went ahead and made that one solid piece on the side there. All right, everything's there. It just needs to be welded together now. I tried to take a shortcut with my flux core welder. That thing's such a piece of junk though. Justin, you ready to get this boat done? Yeah, I'm ready. Brought you a little snack. Oh, well, real funny, real funny. We don't eat those. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. I'm gonna go get some gas for the welder real, real fast. I'll be right back. Banana. 
We use some auto body filler or Bondo to cover up the wells just in case there's a couple little pinholes in there. I definitely don't want any leaks in this boat. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm not an auto body guy either. I'm basically a jack of all trades, master of none. We're here to see to give you this breaking news report that everybody just wanting to know. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you think the boat will sink or will it float? Sink. Sink? <laughs> what about you, ma'am? Do you think the boat will sink or will it float? Sink. Sink? What about you, sir? Will the boat sink or will it float? Sink, sink, sunk. I guess we're going to be sinking. <laughs> now for the finishing touches before we throw on the paint. Whoa, now. You really shouldn't be watching that. Here you go. Oh, you can't see anything either? That's probably the real reason why I'm so bad now. Got her. Do you think this boat will float? No sure, Bob. I don't think it will. This is probably my favorite part of the whole boat. We ended up using treks in the bottom. It just makes it so nice to walk on. Hopefully it floats, so uh, we get to keep using it. How many screws are you going to put to the bottom of the boat? At least three. Alright. Well, so far the general consensus is that this boat will not float. But excuse me, sir, what is your opinion? Will this boat float? Well, sir, I have to tell you this, I am not on stupid pills. I have studied the aerodynamics, and I know there's physics behind this, and I can assure you that this will absolutely, positively float. Found the perfect stir stick. I'm over here trying to get set up for painting, and this silly chicken over here is trying to lay an egg on my workbench. Silly chicken. These chickens are so ungrateful since they burned down my hen house by knocking over the heat lamp. But you know, first world problems. That and this spray gun's not really working too good. I guess I'll just have to roll it on. Me and Justin figured orange was a good color to help aid in search and rescue. We're not gonna take shortcuts here. We took the treks out before we painted it. Justin, what are you complaining about? I did the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even have a roller thing to use. <laughs> Can't spend a dollar for one drone. <laughs> that looks really difficult. It is, we don't have the right tools, Josh. Come on, Justin, I did have my half of the boat. Kids these days, that's all they do is complain. Sure would be nice to have proper tools. Last but not least, let's throw some identification on there for the divers. Well, so far again, our general consensus said that this boat will not float. Excuse me, sir. Will this boat float? I'm surrounded by a bunch of cow turds. Of course it's going to float. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The truth has been said. Justin, do you think your dad will carefully borrow his trailer? Nah. That's why I better ask for uh, forgiveness and permission. <laughs> That's true. Arrived at destination. Here goes nothing. Whoa. Whoa. 
kind of wobbly. Is that water coming in? Is it plugged in, Justin? Ooh, this thing's rocky. <laughs> Is it plug in? Put the plug in, Justin. Fix that. <laughs> yeah, we got a minor leak somewhere. I know. Oh, this thing's wobbly. How about all those naysayers, Justin? Mm -hmm. It floats. <laughs> Overall, the boat was a success, but barely. It was very, very squirrely. We believe that if we would have lengthened the boat just a little bit more, it would have been much more stable. Excuse me, sir. Did you see what happened? Yeah, I did. I was there watch put that boat in the water. I thought to myself, don't do it. But it was too late. They dumped up that boat one. It was squirrely.